Well, Coach, first official press conference of the season. Uh, it's been a long couple of weeks in camp. Uh, just give an opening statement. Uh, how excited you guys are to, to get out on the field on Friday? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great camp. You know, I'm proud of these guys, and uh, they really showed up with a uh, you know a workman a workman attitude and daily. You know, we've been th we went through some heat and kind of went through a lot of different things this camp, and um, you know they kept showing up and working hard. You know, they're a hungry team and uh, sick of hitting each other. You know, ready to ready to get this thing started, but um, really proud of the way our coaches, you know, handled camp and the way our players showed up every day. And our training staff did a great job of making sure uh, we were smart on the, on some of the hot days and, and got through it. You know, fairly healthy. You know, which is hard to do when you're really hitting and trying to have a physical camp. Uh, there's risk reward there. You know, and I thought top to bottom, our 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 players did a great job, and and uh, and now we finally get to turn the page and 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 play another team and hit someone else. So uh, it's a uh, it's an exciting week. You know, we're not done with preparation by any means, but uh, we're definitely well on our way. We've had a couple of practices, getting ready for Michigan State. Um, you know, obviously they're a great team. They're a top twenty team. You know, solid all over the place. Um, and and so it's been fun, kind of introducing our team to them and their their returners, at least what you know. Because you don't know a ton, they could, they have they have co very good coaches. They could have changed and put in new stuff, and so you prepare for what you see on film and be prepared for anything and and know your rules and uh, you got to trust them when they give us something we haven't seen before. And um, you know, and and I'm I'm excited for some of our our veteran defense to get out there and play again. I love watching those guys play, and they really ended the season with a little bit of uh, momentum and. Uh, Offensively, we got some new faces. I'm excited to put them out in the fire and and, and see how they do. They've been, had a great camp, and um, and then special teams wise, we got a super veteran group. Other than our kicker, our place kicker is going to be a true freshman. So uh, so it's kind of a mixed bag there of, of unbelievable veteran guys that have been here forever, and and uh, one new guy that's going to get his first taste. He's had a great camp in, in Palmer Domsky. So uh, so it's exciting to uh, to get ready and get closer to game day on Friday. Schedule's changed quite a bit in terms of how early players can come in. Obviously, you're limited in what you can do with them in that early time, but how much does that benefit team chemistry to have them in here a couple weeks before they normally are? Oh, huge. I mean, the, the, some of the, the team building stuff uh, we're allowed to do. You know, it doesn't count against uh, ours the same way as having a practice or lifting them or doing something physical. Uh, so for them being able to spend time with us and us spend time with them and work on the team building and, uh, throughout the summer during workouts, I mean, they take trips to the Warren dunes and, um, during camp, we've, we've done a lot of different things to, you know, spend time with different groups and just grow the team closer. You know, we have a, a fairly veteran group, you know, top to bottom. And, and, uh, so it's been fun with this transfer portal, you know, there's there's new guys on the team every year from new places and and finding out their stories and, and getting them acclimated to our our culture and what we're doing is uh, has been one of one of the highlights of my summer and, and into camp here. All right, we'll open up for questions. If you could please identify yourself before asking a question. Hey, coach, Andy Pepper from Channel three. How are you? Good. How are you, man? Uh, I heard Robin say at the luncheon about um, you know, Michigan State hasn't released the two deep. You guys haven't released the two deep. <laughs> um, so I'm all pressure on that. But I guess what can you tell us, though, about some of the pivotal position battles like, you know, offensive line? You went into the fall with uh, three spots to fill and yep. obviously wide receiver as well. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our starting offensive line, surprisingly enough, uh, you know, has been the same since the beginning of spring. Um we have a couple guys that I know are, are trying to get into that starting lineup, but Trevor Campbell has been playing left guard. He played he played last year, rotated through, uh, and Addison West, our right guard, um, he rotated a ton last year as well. So they're 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 new starters, I guess you would say. They both I think maybe started one game at one point with injury uh, to other players, but uh, they kind of look like veterans out there, and uh, and so they've kind of won those spots. And but we got a bunch of guys that are going to be pressing them. Uh, and then Jack Sherwin at right tackle, you know, he's he's played a ton of reps at tight end in his career. You know, we've known since the moment we recruited Jack that he was going to be a tackle. It was just when was he going to get big enough, you know. So uh, he's been our starting blocking tight end. We've never thrown him a pass for obvious reasons. Uh, but now he's right tackle. He's, he's finally got the weight to where we need it, and he's extremely athletic. And uh, so those five, uh, we got three or four that are, that are you know, chomping at the bit to get a shot. And... Um, 
And so that's at least starting wise, that's what that's what the first five are going to look like uh, as of today. Um, wide receiver wise, it'll be interesting. I mean, everyone knows Corey Crooms and um, but uh, we got four other guys that are kind of battling for three spots. They'll all play, you know, um, transfer. A.J. Abbott from Wisconsin's done a good job. Jelani Galloway transfer from Boston College has done a really good job uh, getting really more comfortable by the minute. Um, Anthony Sambucci has been here for a couple of years now. He's already played a ton of special teams and a little bit of offense and defense. He's looking better and better. Uh, and then Kavion Mack, who's been here for a couple of years, you know, is, is playing at a high level, you know. And so uh, those those five, you know, around or those four around Corey Crooms will be the ones uh, that uh, that will fill out that that group. Uh, Patrick Nothaft, Kalamazoo Gazette and I'm live. Um, Coach, who is uh, maybe the one guy on offense who's made the biggest strides uh, with that unit this year, this, uh, during fall camp, I should say? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, there's the obvious answer when you have a, a new quarterback. You know, Jack's done a great job. I mean, he's really had a great camp. Um, but I would say, you know, we, we've had uh, Blake Bosma as a kid. The tight end, he's a tight end. He'll be one of our three men that wrote rotation in there. Uh, so only Richard saw a Richard freshman just came here last year, uh, had shoulder surgery in the off season. So I wasn't really expecting much out of him. Um, he's a walk on from right up the road and, and man, he's been making plays and, and he got training staff did an unbelievable job getting him back. I was like, Oh, he's never going to get his weight high, big enough. It'd be really hard for him to do. It. And he did it. So he's had a pretty good camp making plays, you know, um, Josh Burgett at tight end, putting his hand down, you know, he's done a great job blocking in Bartol, but, um, I would say Bosma is a guy that's that's flashed a little bit in camp uh, that we weren't necessarily expecting. You know, same question for the defensive side of the ball. Who's one guy who's made the biggest strides during fall camp? Ooh, good question. I mean, they're all returning. It's like a veteran group back there. So I would say our our group of twos uh, on the defensive side of the ball has really come a long way. I mean, everyone knows D Ware and Bryson um, and D Jack and Bustle is, I mean, they've, they've been playing, they've been starting a long time, but you know, watching can I lovely push himself. I mean, can I love he's an interception machine. It seems like every interception we get a heap, it, it finds its way to him, you know? And so uh, we got to get him on the field as, as well as he's playing. Um, Anthony Rumps, another guy, another corner transfer from Purdue who's playing just got better as, as as camp went on. Aaron Walford is a redshirt freshman that we moved to some safety just to get him on the field because we had so many corners, you know, and he's getting better and better and better. And um, and then I'd say the last two, Giovanni Sanders is a transfer from uh, St. Francis, right where, D, right where D Jack came from, same school, uh, senior. Um, so the, that, that second group of cover guys has been – just as good as the first, you know, and, and that's going to be helpful. You know, you got to go through a long season. The injuries are going to be part of the game. Uh, but I would say that group uh, has really stepped up. And then I would say in the front end, um, the two guys that I think have got themselves into a position where we got to play him, Damari Roberson, who's been around here for a long time and been through every surgery and injury you could have, has um, really come along at, at the same position. He's behind Zaire, unfortunately, but uh, having a chance to get him on the field and then uh, young D lineman Josh Nobles, I think, has kind of shown himself to be a guy that, uh, as a young redshirt freshman, you know, he's still, once again, he's behind Marshawn and he's by, behind Andre Carter, and um, but but ready to, to step in and make a difference when they get a shot on the field. Any injuries from fall, from fall camp that uh, will have guys out or questionable against Michigan State? Uh, the the only one is uh, is Hence, you know, which no one. No one knew about him coming in. And we knew about him because he, he's, uh, you know, son of a Hall of Famer here and, and transferred here. And we were really excited about him at the tight end spot, you know, and he, he got banged up. So he'll be out for quite a bit. And hopefully he gets back mid mid to late late part of the season. Um, but he's he's the one the one injury we had all of camp, really. I mean, it was just a twisted twisted knee nothing too bad but bad enough that he's going to miss some time here so feel terrible for the kid he was a senior you know and missed last year due to an injury and was all ready to go for this year um and so he's banged up but other than that we're healthy and feeling good and ready to go are there any true freshmen that uh, you're pretty confident we'll see at least uh, four games this year palmer domsky 
Yeah, I mean, if, if he kicks the way he's been kicking, he's done a good job. Uh, he's definitely um, – I think he's the only one in a starter's role right now as far as the true freshman goes. Um, young, I mean, we got two young running backs that I could see getting themselves in there. Um, Nate Anderson is a young wide receiver that I feel like by midseason, if he keeps working the way he is, if he does, um, I could see it. He's shown, he's shown some flashes, you know. Um, but no, I mean, hopefully you'd love to have a team where not a ton of those guys play. And we're, I think we're lucky enough to have some depth. I like the class, um, but I'm, I'm thankful that they don't have to all come in and play right away, you know, other than Palmer. And uh, with Michigan State, uh, obviously you're familiar with uh, their quarterback and um, yeah. his father, who's now an offensive coordinator. Uh, what kind of challenges does Peyton Thorne pose for a defense? Well, I, th I think he's like most good quarterbacks is the number one problem the hardest thing that he presents is he's, he's smart. He's not going to make mistakes, you know? And, um, so you watch him and, uh, and he, he always knows where to go with the ball. You're not going to confuse him a ton. Um, you're still going to try, but it's, it's harder. Um, it's like, so it's, and it's hard to get to him. You know, the, the real smart ones, when you're, when you're bringing pressure and trying to, trying to hit him, he doesn't hold the ball. He gets rid of it and, and he gets up. Uh, that's probably the one thing I've known Peyton, since he was born and uh he's a tough kid and so he took he, he's you watch him on film he's watching him take some shots like big ones and uh and he keeps getting up you know and that's uh that's a that's a sign of a good one or a tough one at least you know and so and, and a team can feed off that you know and so uh so that's kind of the thing we got to just make sure that we keep you know off balance and, and see you know they're going to try to create a run game like every team should and uh and, but he's definitely got some weapons on the edges that, that he can throw. They got three new offensive linemen as well. Um, so the, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, he definitely has some weapons, and he knows how to find them. And, and so we're going to have to do a good job covering. Uh, Bill Broderick, uh, Battle Creek Inquirer, following up on that, is there any insight that can be gathered from having a, the father of the opposing quarterback on your coaching staff, anything that you guys talked about during the week? Mm -hmm. No, nah, I mean, not really. I mean, we can, we can, uh, we watch the film. I mean, from every angle, um, you know, obviously he was, he was at every single game last year or most of the games last year. He wasn't looking at their defense cause he didn't know he was going to be our offensive coordinator at the time, you know? Uh, but you know, I think that there's, there's little things here and there that, you know, I mean, obviously I know Peyton well, Jaden Reed was an all American here, you know? Um, so we know him really well. And, um, so I mean, guys, very little, I mean, very little, uh, you know, just respect, you know, you give them the respect, you know, they deserve when you have that connection with them. And so you respect the respect them more and, and make sure that you, you are aware of what they're doing at all times. Western Michigan has had a reputation of playing the quote unquote, bigger schools or power five schools really tough as, as you guys did last year as well. And uh, playing in Michigan state that fits in that category. And there's, also, that kind of goes along with that. The kids that you recruit me or may not have not been recruited by Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So is there a chip on the shoulder of those kids? And also, is there some confidence that can be gleaned from playing those bigger schools uh, really tough and also beating them? Yeah, obviously, you know, I think our guys, I don't know if I'd say chip. I, I definitely think, you know, they know they know who recruited them and who didn't. You know, I think they I think they take more pride in, in Western Michigan and what we can do than – than trying to settle a grudge from when they were 18 or 17, you know, um, I think they're just proud of this team. Um, and it's a great opportunity, you know, to, to play in some great stadiums and atmospheres and, and to show, uh, show what we can do, you know, kind of like the pit game last year, we came out and played well and, um, you know, and, and just played solid football. That's what it comes down to. I think once these, once the guys learn that got to come out and take care of the ball and, and run the ball and, um, not change who we are, just go be us. You know, and, and it will help you win, win or lose. It helps you learn a ton about yourself or when you get to the next game. You know, our next game is a conference game, which is huge. Uh, so, you know, this is a great – there's no better way to test yourself than to play a team like this. I know our fans love it. I played here. I loved it. I mean, Florida was my favorite game I ever played my senior year, first game down in the swamp, you know. And uh, so our kids are looking forward to it. Our coaches are. And, and I think it helps us get prepared for, for our season. And, and it, gives, it offers a – Offers us great opportunities to, uh, you know, to to go out there and play some really good teams. Hey, Coach Andy Pepper again. Um, 
you you mentioned at the luncheon about um, this being the uh, I can't remember the exact phrase you used the the best conditioned, mm. most in shape team you ever have. And obviously you have wonderful new ways now to be able to yeah. measure and chart that rather than just, you know, like you yeah. said back in the day, throwing up and getting out of practice. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about the shape <laughs> your guys are in. Uh, I mean, G2, Grant Guybe and our strength staff do an unbelievable job of getting our guys prepared. And um, and when we, we use, you know, the GPS systems to know every single day how they're running, how their legs feel, how much – how 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 far did the total volume did they move how far did they move jogging speed and how much did they move at high speed uh and high speed is uh aggressive acceleration deceleration and it's called hit yards it's a big number it, it's the number that matters the most how much high intensity yardage can you cover and how do your legs feel afterwards you know so um so we've had data for years now. I mean, for the, that was one of the first things when I got here that we started doing. It's what they do in the NFL. It's what they do in the in the NHL and the NBA. They 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 train with these GPS units. So we we raised money right when I got here when we started using them. So we have we have years of data, and by far, uh, this team's the hardest working team we've had. You know, not we didn't really expect it. You know, just you get the numbers and our strength coach says, hey, we're this is the hardest practice we've ever had hit yardage wise as far as high speed yardage that happened out there today in the same amount of time of a practice that we've always had. And then so then you start worrying about their legs, <laughs> you know, can they do and then they maintained it and maintained it. And weeks later, that's a normal practice, you know, so um, so I, I was proud of them. You know, you're doing it more for we do it more for safety of our players to make sure they're in shape and then we're, we're safe with soft tissue injuries because once they get it's a great indicator of, hey, this guy's legs are tired. He's going to pull something, a groin, a hamstring. You're going to have issues. So we do it as a way to take care of our student athletes. Um, but it's also a way to to be like, wow, we're we're in shape. We're ready to run and play and hit. And we've had a physical camp. We've hit more than I've ever hit in any of the camps I've been here. And uh, this team, this team's hungry and in shape and, and, and ready to play.